What's up guys? This is Front Suspension Explained. It's going to be a longer video because there's a lot of information in it. So there's going to be timestamps down in the description. If you're a novice builder though, just don't skip anything. Watch the whole thing because there's a lot of good info. So enjoy. So this is what it looks like all together. And now I'll show you an older bounce test clip. Now that was me jumping on this thing as hard as I can. And I still have plenty of travel left, so those shocks will do just fine. And now I'll tell you what all the uh, parts are that I used and where you can get them or something. All right, so first my most asked question is, where'd you get the rack? Now that rack, if you just Google 14 inch rack and pinion, um, J Bugs and Apple Tree will pop up and you'll see the 14 inch rack with the heim joints on both ends, that's what I used. And then we'll move over to the shocks here. These shocks are Fox um, five inch emulsion coilovers and then the coils are 12 inch, 100 pound per inch coils. And then we've got the hubs and knuckles, which I built myself. So unless you buy them for me or build them, you can't use them. But you could definitely find stuff from like a four-wheeler or something that you can use up here on the front. Might not be as good, but it'll be, you know, you'll still be out driving. Um, and then the rotor, or sorry, the caliper that goes on here is a early Gixxer 1000 caliper from the back of the motorcycle. I bought two of them, used them for the front here, and then I had to custom make the brake disc here because the stock brake disc is way too big to fit inside of that 10 inch wheel. That guy right there. And now this wheel is not the actual wheel for this thing, it's just for mock-up. This is a golf cart tire, but the actual wheels will be cross cart wheels, which you can find at gpsoffroad.com They're out of Las Vegas, so shipping will be free, all that stuff. And then lastly, we've got all the heim joints and everything in here are all 5 8 inch chromoly heim joints. I found them cheapest at uh, barnesfourwheeldrive.com. The front heims are also 5 8 and for the next builds, I'm going to bump those up to 3 quarter just to add some extra beef. All right, next we can talk a little bit about spring geometry here, but there is a lot that goes into this, so I'm just going to cover some very basic stuff. Um, first off, I will uh, talk about how to figure out where to mount this, right? So you always want this mounted as far out on your lower A-arm as possible, so your spring rates can be as low as possible. So if I had this spring, you remember this is 100 pounds per inch. If I had the spring mounted here, now I'd probably need a uh, 300 pound per inch spring because the leverage on this arm through that spring would be uh, a lot less. And then the angle that you mount it at too is gonna make a difference too. This spring is actually 100 pounds per inch when you stand it straight up and down, you're getting that 100 pounds per inch. As you lean it down though, you're losing um, spring rate. There is a formula online you can look up to figure out what that uh, difference is going to be. I had AccuTune off-road build these shocks for me so the spring rates are perfect and the shock valving is perfect for this application. Also, when you're finding your shock position, your mounting positions in your buggy, um, you're really going to have to be diligent about this. So this shock setup has five inches of travel, right? My suspension though has about seven inches of overall travel. Now that can happen because A, the shock isn't mounted directly in the center of the wheel. So the wheel is always going to travel farther than the shock does because of your lever arm here, right? But having it mounted at an angle too is also going to uh, give you more travel, right? So if this is mounted straight up and down, 
it would be closer to five and five. Like I said, this has five inches of travel. If I set it straight up and down, I would get about five inches of wheel travel before I bottomed out the shock. But with it mounted at an angle right here, I'm actually getting eight inches of travel through here. So what you're gonna wanna do is find your upper and lower mounting points that you're thinking about using, right? And then drop your lower A-arm here all the way down to what you want full droop to be and then measure how long that is. So right now I got uh, about 16 and a half inches because this is a 16 and a half long shock. And then you're gonna wanna lift it all the way up to what you want your highest point of travel to be. Put some blocks under there or something and then measure that again. And um, for me, I had eight inches, right? But I've only got seven inches of travel. So there's about um, five eighths of an inch more travel in my shock. I don't think that'll be a problem, but if it ever was, I would just build another little rubber bump stop right in the bottom. So before the bottom of the chassis slammed the ground, it would actually hit the bump stop. If you don't do any of this, you just think, oh, I'm, I want 12 inches of travel, so I'm gonna put a 12 inch shock on here. Uh, you're gonna have a rude awakening when you hit a jump and it comes down and your whole chassis slams the ground. And then, you know, you flip or something. So you have to, uh, really, really check into that stuff if you're doing your own kind of build. And then next we have our A-arms here. This is a short, long, double wishbone front suspension, right? Because the top A-arm is shorter than the bottom A-arm. And that is so you can, uh, when your wheel's going through travel, dang it, when your wheel's going through travel, the camber gain will be, uh, more regular. If they were the same length, your camber gain would kind of curve in a circle. You don't want that to happen. That's why you put a shorter up around the top. Also, that helps you uh, get your kingpin angle here. Now, I will tell you those numbers in a second, but uh, I will tell you right now that, that my uh, suspension mounting points here are totally arbitrary. There's no science into that. It's just where they would fit and then making sure that my uh, coil spring would fit inside of my upper A-arm without crashing into anything. So it's also, you can see that it's not mounted square. It's mounted up at an angle, kinda. That's really just because I wanted the nose of my buggy to be up a little bit. So, um, you know, when I'm in heavy braking or something, and uh, you know the whole buggy is gonna tip forward. I don't want this being able to scrape the ground at all. So it'll really just give me a little bit of extra travel in the front before the uh, chassis hits the ground. Also, there is something to do with um, anti-dive and anti-squat geometry, but I don't really understand that yet. So I didn't work any of that into here. And when you're building these uh, A-arms, and you're welding in, you know, your inserts or whatever you do, make sure you drill a hole, at least two holes, and then make a plug weld. So you'll just weld into the insert and make it now part of the tube itself. So it's not just a weld at the end because that'll be pretty weak and this will just help strengthen it so you're not having blowouts here. You don't have to use heim joints front and rear. I just did because I knew that my geometry would be a little bit off and that gives me extra adjustability for the whole setup so I can get it perfect at the end. It is more expensive, but I do think it's worth it. Now, what most of you have probably been waiting for is the actual numbers that I have built into this knuckle here and this whole suspension. So I only was worried about three things really. My kingpin inclination, my caster angle, and my scrub radius down here at the bottom. So my kingpin inclination through here, whatever this angle is, that's 12 and a half degrees. And then my caster angle, the angle from here to the bottom joint is five and a half degrees rotated back. Then my scrub radius down here is about an inch and five eighths. It's a little wider than I wanted it to be, 
I would have liked to have been around an inch and a quarter, but with um, how wide this hub has to be for that caliper to sit in there, that's all I could do. So you could see that I couldn't have I couldn't have moved that lower point in anymore because it would have been touching the brake rotor there. So all the best I could get here on my king plane angle was 12 and a half degrees. Now I could have rotated that back even more and then made my scrub radius, uh, you know, an inch and a quarter like I wanted it, but you don't really want to go over 12 and a half degrees on your kingpin angle here. So I had a compromise and that's what it was. Now, if you're wondering what a scrub radius is, go ahead and Google it, but basically it is uh, a measurement. So you just put a line through the center of your upper and lower joints and take that all the way down to the ground. And then you'd put a line through the center line of your tire, which is easy to see on here. And then just measure the distance from the center of there to wherever that line hit the ground. That's your scrub radius. Your scrub radius, your, your kingpin inclination, and your caster angle are all going to work together to uh, define how easy this thing is to steer and then how well it turns into corners. And, uh, you know, it's going to have a lot to do with your braking forces, too. I was mostly worried about steering input and how hard we're turning in. I'm not sure how it's going to be yet, so. We're gonna have to wait and see on the first test drive of this thing. It does feel really, really light though in the steering, so I love that. All right, so let's give it another look here. I'm going to uh, go ahead and jack it up, take the wheel back off here, undo one of the shocks and just put it through travel so you can see how it looks. And then we're gonna wrap this thing up. The wheel's off. I'm gonna try to keep this hub nice and straight so you can uh, judge the camber angle by the uh, brake disc or the hub face there, if it changes at all. So from my angle, I didn't really see any camber change, which actually isn't great. I do want a little bit of camber as it comes up to the top. So what I can do is adjust my heim joints in on the top arm here, and I'm also gonna have to adjust my steering rod so I don't uh, introduce any bump steer, but I think that should work out just fine. So I'm gonna call that the end of the video. Um, I'm sorry if it was kind of messy. I was jumping all over the place. I didn't really know what direction to go in. I tried to get as much out there as possible, if you have any questions, my link is always in the video description for Instagram. You can message me on there, very responsive. And if enough of you message me about the same question, I'll just make a video about that. I'm thinking that one of those videos might be just about the shocks. Um, if you liked the video, as usual, hit all the buttons, let me know you liked it. Follow the build because I will be putting um, plans out there very soon. I finally figured out how to use Fusion 360 to build all my CAD files. So there's no, there's going to be no guessing on the front end anymore because I'll have it completely built out on the computer before I ever touch any steel. So that'll be awesome. Uh, we'll know exactly where to put the tabs instead of kind of guessing. Uh, but you know what it is. As usual, just keep coming back, guys. Thanks.